Let's take a look at the terminal occurrence associated with an op amp. To begin with, the op amp symbol looks like this. All five terminals are shown. Let me draw the details of the power supply connections. In fact, we can think of this as two batteries connected at ground, one to establish the positive supply voltage and another to establish the negative supply voltage. I'll also go ahead and show the complete details of the two input signal sources as well as any loading circuitry that might be attached to the output of the op amp. Now it's standard practice to define currents associated with an electronic device like this as positive when the current enters the device. Now this is just the definitions. It's not to suggest that this is automatically indicating how the currents actually in fact flow. These are just definitions. Since the op amp is a voltage amplifier, it has a very high input resistance. So we can approximate the two input currents as zero. The output current varies according to the needs of the load circuitry. And again, according to the way IO or the output current is defined, we can say that the output current is minus the output voltage, VO, divided by the load resistance. So we see that the output current depends both on the output voltage and the value of R sub L. So it just varies as needed. This output current is drawn from the power supplies. So no current is stolen from the input source, uh, sources, so to speak, but rather is all drawn from these power supply batteries. So for example, when the output voltage is greater than zero volts, then the actual flow of current to the load is in this direction. We would say that IO is a negative value. The flow of current then associated with the positive supply voltage looks like this. Might help to actually draw the wire that physically is there because these are both called ground. So current basically takes this uh, continuous path circulating through the load resistance. Now it turns out that there is always some current associated with both supply terminals and so we would see some current flowing in this direction as well. If we say that the output voltage falls below zero volts, then this real current direction reverses and is mostly flowing in this direction associated with our negative supply. But there would also still be some flow associated with the power or the positive supply. Now Kirchhoff's current law or KCL for the op amp would state that the sum of currents entering the device is equal to zero. And as noted earlier, these two signal input currents are negligible and can be written as zero. So we're really left with these three currents all summing to zero. Now let's look at the power required by the op amp. The power of course is drawn from the power supplies. Recall that the power associated with any two terminal device is voltage times current. And for our case, we're looking at the uh, pair of supplies here. So that would be VCC times the current ICCP, ICCP plus the voltage uh, source value times ICCN. Now we have to be a little careful on the signs here. We notice that the current is leaving the positive terminal. So we're, act we're actually using active sign convention here and we say that value is supplied to the circuit. Here we see the current definition is leaving the negative terminal. And that would correspond to passive sign convention. So that expression that I've written down is actually absorbed from the circuit. So if I change the sign, now we can say this is the complete power supplied to the circuit. Now you can also temporarily redefine the direction of 
the negative supply current. And that might be a little bit easier to look at. It's the sum of those two power supply powers.